Welcome to On Texas Football. It's time for lunch with the coach, uh, Brian Irwin, former two-time state champion. And not former, you're just always a two-time state champion. Uh, <laughs> coach Lamar Cougars uh, joins me. Of course, uh, it's football time. There was a game on Saturday. That means Monday we get lunch with the coach. Uh, Brian, welcome in and uh, glad you were able to watch the game on Saturday. Thank you, Bobby. It was a lot of fun. Good to uh, get a chance to watch football and and uh, look like it was an exciting day. I watched it on TV. I wasn't there, but uh, uh, looked like it was an exciting day and uh, very exciting to see all that talent running around the field. I was going to say, you're an offensive coach. What, 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 a, you, what, what do you think about what you saw on Saturday? That might have been the best spring game I've ever seen in my life from a from a from just a competitive standpoint, uh, high quality of play, points. You know, the thing that stuck out to me is – it wasn't all this fabricated, generated points by, okay, defense gets points by getting a three and out or getting a turnover. It wasn't, you know, a lot of spring games, you, they just manufacture points with a bunch of tricky stuff. This was, this was you score, you get points, you know, whether it was offense or defense. And uh, the number of points the offense put up both sides uh, was amazing. It was, it was a spectacle. A lot of talent on the field, a lot of speed on the field. And very exciting. Uh, people come out of there talking about two main things, primarily the quarterback play, and then they're worried about the defensive backs, obviously. They, you know, there's a tip yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I wrote an article on Sunday for on TexasFootball.com, and I just said the gun is loaded on offense, man. They yeah. got dudes. Uh, yeah. Just about every position. Uh, what were your primary takeaways, Brian? My primary takeaway is the amount of, of talented depth that we have uh, on both sides of the ball, but I call it talented depth. Um, and this is the first time we've been here in, in, in quite some time, but I, I was able to coach a few teams that had this kind of talented depth relative to the, the level that I coached at. Um, you know, sometimes you're in a small school and you, you had some talent, but you have any depth, you know, and then you got into a little bit larger school and you had some talent, but you didn't have the depth. And then occasionally you, you get one of those, talented deep teams and when you have a talented deep team it, it creates competition from within tremendous competition because when you when you don't have competition from within and a guy knows he's the best at his position doesn't matter what he does this spring no matter what he does this summer he's not on edge he's not he's not on point because he knows nobody can push you nobody can oust him and and so uh that that's a tough situation to handle as a coach and and, and within a program. But when you have this amount of talent to depth that creates that competition, now they know, you know, Quinn knows he's got a guy right behind him. I mean, right behind him, nipping at his heels. You know, the running back position, CJ knows Jaden Blue's right there. Jaden Blue knows CJ's right there, nipping at his heels. And it's offensive line, the same can be true said there. Uh, wide receiver position, the same can be, you know, said there. Uh, so that talented depth creates the competition. And thirdly, I think that competition then uh, creates excellence. And that's what this football team's poised to uh, experience is excellence. And we're, we're elite. And, and because we've got the competition built in every single day, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's in conditioning, whether it's in seven on seven, uh, no matter what we're doing this summer, there's competition from within. We can lose this guy because we got another guy to step right in and, and go. We don't want to lose anybody, but we know things happen. We call us kids. And uh, the, these guys have to be on point. They got to be on edge. They're going to lose their spot. Got it. Uh, speaking with Brian Irwin, two time head coach uh, of the Lamarck Cougars state champions, uh, also a uh, high school head coach around the uh, state of Texas for a number of years, graduated from Texas, was a student assistant uh, and grad assistant. Uh, for the Longhorns and elsewhere. Hey, Brian, uh, let's talk about Arch Manning, uh, because I think that uh, he and Trey Owens, the, the third string quarterback, uh, mm -hmm. both went on a show to a degree it, relatively, uh, but Arch Manning came out 11 for 11 to start. Mm -hmm. And man, after that first pass, everybody, I, I think it was kind of a dull spring game, and all of a sudden Arch Manning throws a bomb, and everybody's eyes perk up and ears ears perk up. Everything Everything is a little bit different. From then on, what did you see from the red shirt freshman out of New Orleans that uh, really got you excited uh, as a former quarterback coach, offense coordinator, and even head coach? I saw a tremendous amount of poise, 
it, it starts to me with his pocket presence. So what, how he handles himself in the pocket. He's completely at ease. His eyes are down the field. His feet are doing what they should be doing. Um, his gap escapes, whether it's an A gap or B gap or C gap escape, is is on point. He's seeing the field. Um, his mechanics are flawless. Fl I mean, flawless. He's the way he loads the football off his throwing shoulder, and it stays there, and it doesn't drop, and it doesn't do anything sloppy or inefficiently. It's it's loaded and ready to go. And then, and then when he makes a decision to trigger. I mean, that thing's coming off that throwing shoulder, and he's triggering. He's got such a quick, quick release. Um, I also, since last year, have really liked his feet and his speed. Uh, he's got he's got tremendous speed. I remember watching some high school film. I'm like, wow, this guy can run, you know. And and so, the one he broke up the middle the other day, they he got a first down. They said, you know, okay, you, you got eight or nine yards for the first down. They wouldn't have tackled him. Uh, he he was still running. So. Um, I, I just think he's an elite talent. He's an elite player. And, um, uh, you know, Quinn's got his hands full with him right behind him. No doubt about it. Now, I will say, you know. That's I will, a good thing for the Longhorns. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing. You know, uh, we, we know how we feel. I think we're right on point with, with, with Arch. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see this. But we also have to kind of go back to last spring game when, you know, Malik Murphy looked fantastic in the spring game. And, uh, you know, we were all coming out of the spring game like, wow, you know, this, this guy, but Arch is a different talent. I mean, he's, he's, he's the type of guy that, uh, he, he's going to play early and often next year. Yeah. I, I've got, I want to talk to you about what you would do as a head coach. If you saw that level of performance and maybe how do you get him into the game yet still keep your continuity with your first team guys? Cause Quinn, Clearly, he's going to be the starter next year. There's no doubting that he's three-year mm -hmm. starter for the Longhorns. But how do you get him ready in case something does happen? And I want to talk to you about that a little bit later. Uh, and then I, I want to ask you about Trey Owens and also the defense of secondary and what you saw overall. But first, I want to say thank you to our um, uh, sponsor of Lunch with the Coach. That is Laura Baker. Uh, she works with Keller Williams Realty there in the Austin area. Anywhere in and around Austin, if you're moving to, from, or within – uh, Laura Baker is your realtor that you need to know. She knows Austin inside and out. 512-784-0505. Uh, That's Laura at AndyAllenTeam.com. Laura's a lifelong Austinite uh, just about, and she has literally seen Austin grow from, uh, I don't know, 250 to 400,000 to two plus million uh, that it is today. So she knows all the nooks and crannies. That's 512-784-0505. Laura at andyallenteam.com. Let's talk about Trey Owens next, uh, the third-string quarterback who, frankly, I mean, he threw some – he may have thrown as nice a ball as anybody in the in that, that was out there that, that uh, what, 20-yard out to Thatcher Milton that was just on a BB and threw yeah. it off his back hill. I mean, he, he showed a lot of ability too, Brian. I mean, you got to be looking at this quarterback room, and I think it's it may be the loaded. best of the country. I mean, I just – it's it's loaded. Yeah. Um, tremendous size, um, big, big kid, tr huge arm. And, and what I really like about him that maybe we don't all know yet, but I, I did read about him a little bit last, you know, last spring and through the recruiting process. And some of the things his high school coach said that he's just a tremendous competitor, like off the charts, freakish competitor. So that's what I'm, Along with his body type, his ability to throw, his ability to run, his ability to be a quarterback, I also like that part of it because I think that's what the quarterback position needs um, with, with a championship football team. You, you know, and, and he played at Cy Fair, which is not a uh, perennial power by any stretch, but they're a good team. They're typically. very good. But they, they played – they beat Katie yeah. in the playoffs. And you don't beat that team – without a, a, a performance of sorts from, from a singular player. And he certainly is uh, one of those guys. So uh, to your point, I think he's a guy that's down the road, but you can see the makings of another. I mean, look, Texas could have three NFL quarterbacks, at least from arm strength alone. I mean, they've got guys. You know what I mean by that? I mean, now they got to go do it. Yeah. But they, they've got guys in that room that are kind of freaking. I think that's going to gonna be the, the, the new norm is, is – we're, we're going to have that guy in the room every year. I mean, it's I, I just can't see it any other way. It's like I, I equate it to when I coached in high school. 
and, and I felt sorry for myself and, and, and all that stuff because I looked across the, the DFW and, you know, Allen every single year had a Division One quarterback. South Lake Carroll every single year had a Division One quarterback. You know, those types of pro- – so then, you know, you, you jump up to Texas and Sarkeesian and I, I just think that's going to be the new norm. We're going to have the elite-level quarterback every year. Now can we keep him healthy and do we have another one behind him if one goes down? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, what did you think about the rest of the uh, skill position talent at Texas uh, on Saturday? Wide receiver, uh, fantastic. I think I think we can be as good or better than we were last year. Um, I I just think from top to bottom, uh, guys more complete packages um, um, with with all the receivers. Uh, they catch radius, speed, physicality, uh, good body types. You know. Um, I just think they're going to be incredibly good. Uh, the wide, the running back room, uh, C.J. Baxter, I saw a little bit of the, the, the his old self in him because, you know, he's probably healthy now, whereas last year he was just so banged up all season long. Uh, Jaden Blue, I, I love him. I loved him from the beginning last year when he came in the game early uh, and showed sparks, and then, and then he finished with a flurry last year. And then the young backs – uh, I think are going to be really, really good. So, you know, on the offensive line, I mean, we that's where we, you know, you and I have talked about, you know, the last couple of months is this is where it starts. I mean, we're, we can be so good. We're so deep on the offensive line. Uh, we're big, the big human factor. Um, you know, they've got a goal of being the Joe Moore Award offensive line. They're, they're setting those kind of goals. They feel good about themselves. And, and uh, that's where we've got to be you know, dominant to start with as, a, as on the offensive line. Got it. Um, Brian, uh, you know, you look at it. What did you think specifically of the receivers? Like, are, were there ones that stood out to you that you said, huh, that's that's interesting? Like, Ryan Wingo clearly had a 100-plus yard day. Isaiah Bond started slowly, finished strong. Jonte Cook, DeAndre, yeah. all those guys. Anything in particular there that you saw that was interesting to you? I just think the, the the catch radius, you know, out of Wingo. Um, uh, Isaiah Bond had the one drop. Arch made a great throw uh, on that one across the middle. He would have scored on it if he'd have caught it. And and what was funny is Arch Arch's feet were kind of off platform there, and you know, his feet were out here to the left, but he's throwing back to his right, and uh, just a beautiful throw. Uh, Isaiah should have caught that ball, but um, you know, it's it's in the spring. We're gonna have some drops. Uh, but the, the catch radius, uh, the explosion, the, catch, the the run after the catch, I thought was tremendous. And then, you know, just separating like Isaiah Bond on the on the fade ball that that Arch hit him on late in the game. It was a weird deal because uh, he inside released the corner in, in a cover one look. He inside released him, and then he and then he worked back outside and stacked him. So that's a that is a true route running concept where he. You, most of the time you're on the fade, you outside release that thing. Uh, but because of the way the corner played it, he actually inside released on the fade and then worked back out to stack the DB. And once he stacked him, it's over because, you know, Arch laid it in there and and then uh, nobody's going to catch Isaiah once once he catches it. So it's just tremendous route running. I think uh, next level route running. So uh, those things we've got to look forward to, and along with the fact that they're physical specimens that can run and they can catch and they've got that catch radius. And I, I didn't watch them close enough to see how, how well they blocked, you know, on the perimeter, especially for the RPO game. But if they're, if they're that explosive and that strong, uh, surely they ought to be able to block. Got it. Uh, speaking with Brian Irwin, coach, the next thing I had for you uh, is the secondary. All these yards for the Longhorns means somebody gave some yards up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, what, what were your what was your takeaway there? Was it just good quarterback play? Was it lacking of some cohesiveness? Uh, what did you see that was either not, would make you think, ah, it's not that big a deal, or hey, we need some, we got some work to do. Where where would you sit on that on that spectrum? You know, I would really need to see. I would need the clicker in my hand and be able to rewind it four or five times each play to to really break it down. See. We're, we're guys just getting beat. Where we having some? Uh, there's no doubt we have some busted coverages. Um, then you combine it with the fact that the pass rush, yeah, the pass rush is getting after it, but they're still holding back. They've got to be holding back a little bit because guys back there in that black jersey and the coaches have threatened them with their life. Don't touch this cat. 
<laughs> and and so that that creates another tenth to two tenths of of coverage time, which favors the offense. I think that favors the offense uh, when when a defensive end or defensive tag can't really pin their ears back completely because they don't want to be out of control coming in at the quarterback's knees or ankles or anything like that. I think that makes a, a difference. Um, and then going back to the one I was just talking about where we hit the fade route, I know we, I think we were in cover one. I know I saw Taft spin down and blitz and then the safety moved to the middle. Well, I'm not sure where the safety was. The free safety just didn't play free safety there. Okay. The corner gets beat. He's real aggressive. He forces an inside release, but why isn't the safety there over the top to, to knock it down or to make the tackle? So I think there's some busted coverages in there. Um, and and those are things that are going to happen in the spring. You can get cleaned up. And, I mean, you look at the personnel, we feel better about the corner position than we've felt in a number of years. I think we feel better about the safety position than we felt in a the long time. So the talent's there. Now putting it all together with the pass rush, I really think we're going to be fine. I mean, I got – you know, I, I just think that the, that we got tremendous amount of talent there. So put it together. Everybody get on the same accord. If y'all right, y'all right. If y'all wrong, we're all right. And uh, and just execute. Anything else you want to add uh, to that to to the discussion overall of the defense? Um, we know we know we need to get more depth in inside defensive tackle. I know. I think we're working on that right now. Um, inside linebacker play is, is I'm still not there yet with inside linebacker play, but, uh, I, I think we could be there. It's just going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more experience. Um, so those three positions, the secondary inside linebacker and DT, the, the, the question mark, the, the problem is, is that's right up the middle of your defense. So, you know, it's funny how now we feel like from an edge standpoint, we, we could be elite. We could be fantastic. Whereas, you know, the last couple of years we're, we can't even sleep because we don't have edge edge play. So now we're, we're, we're elite, but uh, I think we'll fix ourselves. I think we'll be fine. I was really pleasantly surprised how well our run defense held up. I, I thought our offensive line, I thought the run game would, would dominate a little bit against our defensive front and um, we stopped the run. So that's a good place to start. Yeah, Jake Majors only played two series, I believe. Yeah, and so that that changed the whole complexion, but it gives you a sense for what the center, uh, a center, a fourth year starter at center, might be uh, the value that he brings to the team as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, to your point, they the defense was missing missing Vernon Broughton. They were missing Trey Moore. They were missing John A. Barron. Mm -hmm. They had they had three starters out. Uh, Ethan, so, Burt, Ethan Burton didn't play much either, did he? Now he played. He played a into the first at the end of the end of the first half. Same with Baron Sorrell. Okay. Did not play much. So okay. I think that the defensive performance you got to. Where, whereas the offense, and this is interesting because the offense after Quinn, and in the in the first team offensive line, they, those guys were getting a lot of first team reps, for, especially the receivers and tight ends, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, we're getting a lot of first team reps for the first time, really, uh, and the defense. Has is older now, and so they were rotating more players out. So mm -hmm. maybe that's part of it. Let, let, let's finish with this. Um, Arch, and we said we'd come back to it. Arch had such a good performance, uh, and uh, Texas has to get him ready mm -hmm. somehow, some way, in case Quinn goes down. How do you handle that in the early season games uh, for Texas against Colorado State, even Michigan, uh, UTSA? Do you play Arch early? Do you wait and see if you mop up time in, in the second half? What You're a former head coach. What you've thought about it, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Out on yes, I pl I, we, we play him. And we play him on schedule early and often. Um, he, he Let's say he comes in the third series of the game, and that's that's the schedule. That's the plan. doesn't matter what the score is. But he comes in. He's coming in the third series of the game. He's going to play – quality snaps against quality opponents from the get-go uh, early in the season. I just don't think we can afford to treat this next season like we did last year with, you know, Malik never got to play. Arch never got to play unless it was like absolute mop-up time. 
And uh, I just think we've got to get Arch. Arch is too talented to be sitting on the bench. We can't wait until something happens to, to, to Quinn to throw in Arch cold. Arch needs to play um, third series of the game against Colorado State, third series of the game against Michigan. And then after that, no no promises. I mean, it's, it's based on how Quinn's playing. And then we get in, hopefully, into some mop-up time, then Quinn – uh, excuse me, Arch gets the opportunity to play a lot maybe in the fourth quarter. But definitely he's coming in, you know, third, fourth series of the game, and it's on schedule, and it doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. So you're talking about preseason where you're not really fighting for the the, the conference championship, right? Correct. You're trying to get – let's get him at least some time early. Correct. Uh, in, in, pre predetermined in games. So that in case anything ever does happen, you're not talking about him taking over for Quinn. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Quinn. Quinn's a starter, period. Uh, but Arch is Arch is going to be coming in the game, the third series of the game. And if it's a three play drive, it's three plays. If it's a thirteen play drive, it's thirteen plays. If we're down fourteen to nothing going into the third series of the game, he's still coming in the game. If we're up fourteen nothing, it doesn't matter. He's He's got to play quality snaps against quality opponents and, and behind the number one offensive line with the number one receivers, the number one running back, number one tight end, and against their number one defense. When the game is on the line, uh, Arch needs um, that experience. He, 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 he's earned that right. He's, he's too talented to, to leave on the bench until three minutes to go in the game when we're up 28, 35 points, that does him no good. Last year, that was fine. But but now he's established himself. He, he's an elite quarterback. He's one play away from being the starter. He needs to play a series in the first quarter, in my opinion. Or, you know, the first half. Depends on how the, the first couple of series goes. But he's playing a, he's playing a series in the first half. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's a change from what we thought just three days ago uh, before we saw him because uh, he was that impressive. Uh, I want to say thanks one last time to our uh, uh, sponsor. That is Laura Baker of Keller Williams Realty. If you're moving to, from, or within the Austin area or just want a second home to go see games uh, on weekends like some people, uh, mm -hmm. give Laura a call of 512-784-0505. Laura at andyallenteam.com. We appreciate her and her sponsorship of On Texas Football. All right, Brian, I'm going to give you one final chance. Anything else you want to you want to add to the uh, equation here in this off-season lunch with the coach? My one of my favorite things, Bobby, this this is this is a critical time of the year right now. Yeah, we we come out of spring ball, it's time to get back in the weight room. It's time to start doing some running, heal up the bodies a little bit, but we, we you know, from a strength conditioning standpoint, from this point on, we have a we have an opportunity to make one more push. You know, do we need to gain two or three pounds? Do we need to gain another 20 pounds on the bench press? Do we need to gain another 35, 40 pounds on the squat? Um, you know, the running, the conditioning, the, the plyometrics, the agility, all those things come into play now, getting them back at that. Uh, and then the biggest piece is no drama. No drama. Keep your nose clean. Uh, we don't need drama. And because, you know, if we have drama out of you, we're, we're – you got a guy right behind you. So that's that's the competition that we talked about earlier that's built in. So let's get it in the weight room. Let's get it in, in strength and conditioning. Um, no drama off the field. Let's keep our nose clean and uh, get ready to have a championship season. Yeah. All right, that's Brian Irwin, uh, former two-time state championship uh, head football coach at the Lamarck Cougars, also around the state of Texas as a uh, head coach as well. Brian, thank you so much for your time, bud. Uh, it's been a fun offseason so far for the Longhorns. And I, I know you saw that game with all those receivers running around and all those uh, running backs running around and quarterbacks tossing it. And you were like, heck yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have some more of this. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, that scoreboard is going to be going ding, 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 ding. We just got to play some championship defense to go along with it. All right. All right. Brian Irwin, thanks so much, Coach. You have a good one. That's been On Texas Football, Lunch with the Coach. Welcome. Welcome.